right. Hey, Jack, how's it going? Hey, hey Tariq. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. And uh, we are doing, I think this is episode five of Somalia this week. Man, that's like uh, almost a month and a half. You know, we're going to be a month and a half. things in, in no time. And, and you're just Wait. like, you're going to be like, Jack, this is episode 52. <laughs> what's, what's going on today? I was just going to say, everybody who's watching the first two minutes are like, when main net? Is this the main net? <laughs> is this <laughs> like... Is this the final test net? Is this incentivized test net? What is this? Um, all right. S-E-W-N-T-M. S-E-W-N-T-M. So, all right. So this is uh, Samilia this week. We're going to talk about uh, the week of the of last week. Uh, what This is April 22nd. And um, let's jump in. So uh, how's it going this week um, on the Samilia team? Uh, you are, you know, VP of product. Uh, and, yeah. Um, I guess you I see am. everything okay. you, you are and you see everything you touch everything. So let's talk about first part. Let's talk about the app. Uh, yeah. Where are we at with the app? What's happening on uh, the Samili app? Yeah. So since we decided to kind of pivot to working primarily on Uniswap V3, mm -hmm. um, you know, we we are we had one full two week sprint where we basically yeah. um, sussed out any. Um, any unknowns that were remaining for building the product um, yep. and, and got a lot of really great pre-work done for things like the subgraph that we're uh, working with the Uniswap team on and, and yeah. as well as app architecture and infrastructure. Um, so this week is the first week of uh, the second sprint that we have prior yep. to that. Yep. Yep. And Woo, second sprint. The, yeah, I know it's it's great. The app team's moving along with implementation. We have clients yep. for the new graph yep. node. Nice. Um, we've been working wait, wait. on. I I heard you guys wrote the initial uh, subgraph for Uniswap to look at and essentially base their Uniswap v3 subgraph off of. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, mm -hmm. we working closely with the Uniswap team. That's an area where we have some expertise. You know, we're we're, we're working Ooh. on the graph indexer. Um, That's right. So we were happy to share that with the Uniswap team to help them get to launch a little bit faster. That's it awesome. also gave a number of folks on the sommelier team a good chance to read through the Uniswap contracts in a lot of detail and understand yep. the event flow, as well as yep. a lot of logic there, which I think was helpful yep. for a wide variety of reasons. Um, so, you know, uh, then, then like this week is kind of building clients for all of that, ensuring that we're mm -hmm. getting the right data out of our price APIs. Which APIs. Great. And, APIs. Yeah, just... It, in integrations and, and kind of jamming yeah. out work this week. Yeah, uh, we yeah. also have a new dev joining us on that team as well. Um, okay. So that's a, a three person new hires. team. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of exciting stuff happening on the app front this week, which is great. Good job. Congratulations. And uh, that that's so we are on schedule for May 5th then. You feeling good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you have coffee next to there? You want to take a sip of that coffee? <laughs> oh, I'm good. I, you know, I, I think that, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're looking great for May 5th. You know, okay. I, I think that okay. Um, okay. there are going to have to be some last minute changes for this product as launch. Yep. yep. Yeah, yep. As, as there always are. I think that the hard part about this one is that the Uniswap V3 periphery contracts, which is the yep. ones that we're going to be mainly interacting with, may yep. change up until launch yep. date. Well, launch time. So, right. uh, you know, what we're trying to do from an engineering team perspective is just put ourselves in a position for success yep. and then be able to shuck and jive with some of those last minute changes and Got it. we will launch on time. Got it. And I think you're deploying, we're already deployed to Rink B and Gorley with the Uniswap V3 contract. So we're testing off of Rink B. Um, yep. Uh, my phone correct. Um, okay, so this is my question. So again, let's just recap. What can users expect Uniswap v3 one sommelier to look like what is the like walk through what the experience will be remind us what is the end product that will come on May 5th that the sommeliers in our network can use yeah you know I think that this is a great time to like zoom back out and say what is sommelier and at sommelier we want to make liquidity provision easy and democratic and easy for any user to go in and provide be it 10 to ten thousand dollars of liquidity mm -hmm. um in, in a way where they understand what risks they're taking and they have a reasonable yeah. chance of a very very strong return so yeah. with that in mind um one of the things about uniswap v3 that is difficult is there's a lot more decisions to make when you're providing liquidity right it's sommelier what we're trying to do is make you make 
fewer decisions. So mm -hmm. uh, we're going to use data to inform where you should deploy your liquidity. Yep. And there's going to be an expectation that that is a good recommendation for the next week. So okay. that as a liquidity provider, you only have to check your positions periodically. Um, but yeah, the experience with adding liquidity for sommelier is going to be very similar to the experience of adding liquidity to Uniswap V2. Yeah. Um, however, you're going to be providing for V3, again, with that uh, possibility for a much higher fee take um, and the other benefits that V3 offers, and including increased capital efficiency and a bunch of other stuff. Right. Awesome. <clears throat> so users, so Simulate Protocol won't be live on May 5th, but users will be able to use Simulier to intelligently take positions on Uniswap V3 in all the pools. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. And, and um, you know, how easy will it be? How easy will it be to use Uniswap V3 for similar users who are used to Uniswap V2? Yeah, you know, it, it's going to be a very similar interface to what we're offering at Sommelier currently, where you can do a one or two sided liquidity addition. Um, mm -hmm. So you show up with some tokens and you click provide yep. liquidity, and we will go ahead and trade you into that position on the back end and then give you the yep. liquidity position on Uniswap V3. So, if you are familiar with the experience of providing liquidity in Uniswap V2, Sommelier yep. is looking to provide that exact same experience for V3. Got it. And, uh, you know, maybe one thing I, a lot of folks are asking us is, you know, um, will there be Sommelier LP tokens for this or is it just going to be an app um, or is there going to be any, you know, um, airdrop for users, um, et cetera? So I'm guessing. It's just going to be the app, none of this other crazy stuff, correct? Are we talking about bananas today? No, no, no. We're talking okay. about um, so we're talking about the protocol. We're going to lead into the oh, okay. familiar protocol. So, okay, What's cool. happening? <laughs> um, so, so with the initial version of uh, with the initial wait, 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 version what, of what? The... you got bananas on your mind, dude. I don't know. I do bananas. have some bananas on, on, on my mind. Um, just, I can't stop thinking about apes. Um, you know. So products start with users, and then we, we, we're here for the apes. Um, That's right. So, uh, you know, with that in mind, initially, no, we're not going to be offering this, sort of this refungible experience for Uniswap V3 liquidity. That is what the right. protocol is going to bring. Um, so mm. this initial version is sort of the first version of Sommelier. And then we're going to bring the protocol to market that helps offer this refungible experience where you're going to have yes. those similar... LP tokens that are fungible shares in liquidity on Uniswap V3 that are then yes. tradable and usable in other decentralized finance applications. Um, and, and happy to kind of discuss that in quite a bit of detail because we made a great architectural breakthrough this this last week, which I'm really yep. excited yep. about. Yep, 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 yep. So, well, let's jump in. Let's talk about the protocol. Um, how was yeah. last week with protocol development? Um, what What's the overview of the protocol progress to date? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, for a lot of the last two uh, two updates here, I've been talking about the different infrastructure that we're going to build over on the Cosmos side and sort of like how that all works together. Mm -hmm. um, we started on the allocation module, which is where validators are going to be deciding where within these Uniswap liquidity pools to deploy the, the liquidity that they're controlling. And through specking that out fully, beginning implementation there, and yep. then starting to work on the spec for the sell seller module, which is the sort of liquidity pool type uh, experience, what we found is we needed to bring in a lot of data from Ethereum and the yep. complexity of the system was increasing very rapidly. So okay. uh, last week we had a series of discussions around that with a number of, uh, you know, Zaki and I chatted and then we talked to some advisors who were also strong Solidity developers and, you know, distributed mm -hmm. systems architects. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we ended up deciding to re-architect. So this seller module that I've been talking about is actually going to be a seller contract. So on okay. Ethereum, there's a lot of these different pool contracts and the seller contract will just be another one of those. Um, mm -hmm. But in that pool will be the uh, NFLP shares. Mm -hmm. And the way that the what is going to happen on the Cosmos side is those allocations are going to be decided 
And then the allocation module will send a control message to the various pools that it's managing to decide on where the allocation goes. And it right. will update that periodically. Yes. So this okay. is that kind of active liquidity management that users are expecting out of sommelier and what we're selling. Mm -hmm. Got it. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and I think, you know, one question I have is when testnet? Um, when testnet. So, you know, with a, a uncertain scope, which is what we've had for quite a while, um, it, it has been hard to give any concrete dates on that. And also yeah. we've had this ongoing gravity work that has sort of put additional uncertainty in the timeline. So yeah, as yeah. the product manager, when things like that are happening, you say, okay, we've got these blockers over here. We're doing everything mm -hmm. we can to resolve them, but let's try to work mm -hmm. on as many things in parallel as we can so that once yeah. we clear this blocker, we can move forward quickly. Right. So that's what right. I've been doing on the protocol side. You know, we've moved mm -hmm. forward with implementation on the allocation module. We've been working really hard to finalize specification for the full protocol and how it's going to work. And again, with yep. that breakthrough this week, that, that changes timelines significantly. So with a clear path to implementation, with a lot of the unknowns answered, um, you know, we've got another, we are kind of still working through some of the implications of this architectural change. We've got a couple of meetings into this week and early next week. So next week, I will give you a timeline as far as when testnet. Um, you know, with the current set of deliverables and the amount of resources we have, it's doable within around two months. Um, yep. So yep. that yep. is that is much better than where we were looking prior. Um, the other thing I was I would say is that that blocker of that gravity refactor, Federico yep. has really pushed that forward quite a lot over the last week, yep. and we're yep. in a position um, now where we're going to be looking to merge that. Uh, probably next Friday, I think, is the awesome. the current uh, goal for merge on that. We're just writing tests and wrapping that up. Um, so wait, let me slow this down. You're saying that the refactoring yeah. of the Gravity Bridge from Rust to Golang will essentially be merged up by next Friday. Like it's not from Rust to Golang. Um, you know, Justin and the Althea team have been you know working with the auditors and working on test nets. Ah to yep. uh, sort of like suss out a bunch of really edge casey issues and to work through any concerns that the auditors have. Um, yep. In parallel, uh, my team of Go engineers has been working on refactoring the core logic in the gravity mm -hmm. module over on the Cosmos yep. SDK side. The yep. reason for that is um, the code base that we started working on last fall that, that Justin and the Althea team have uh, maintained was originally written by another team, and it was actually it has pet, it passed a couple ah, of teams' hands before it got so, out. God, there was so a lot of technical debt. From, you're refactoring from go to go. <laughs> yes, we are refactoring from go to go. So there was there was a lot of technical debt. the The style of the code was not really the style of the SDK, which made it hard to read, and there were some kind of needlessly complicated pieces to it. Um, okay. We also, through the process of building Gravity, added a bunch of functionality to it as, you know, yep. when you're building something, you kind of find things that you miss and you add them. And that led the API to be confusing, poorly named, yep. and hard to maintain. So what we've done is kind of said, okay, we're not going to change anything about the design. Like, this yep. design works great. We validated it on a number of test nets. What we need to do is increase reliability, increase testability, yeah. increase modularity, and increase documentation on that. Um, so the refactor that we've been doing is primarily for those goals um, and, and to enable it to get ready for completing the checklist of things to get on the hub, as well as you know right. for us to deploy it on sommelier. Um, yeah. So that refactor is nearing completion. You know, obviously something that touches all the different parts of the code breaks all the tests, breaks all of the yeah. integrations. There has yeah. been, you know, work on the Rust side, work on the Go side. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we kind of kicked this refactor off really strongly about three weeks ago. Um, yeah. we, we did some work kind of specking it out and ensuring that we had uh, resources to do it for a while. Yeah. But yeah. now that we've now that we've gotten rocking on it, it is moving quickly, um, which is Good. really Congrats. nice. And uh, yeah, looking to hopefully have that merged end of next week. Awesome. That is great. I guess we will ping you next week as you're going to Oh, yeah. To well, I, I promised you a couple of things next week. 
One is a gravity merge and the other is timelines for protocol. Um, so <laughs> we will see. Um, that get me. Well, well, you, 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 for every week and every uh, event today, or you've delivered and you and your team have delivered. So congrats, well done. And I know that you've expanded your team and you're hiring, right? You're looking for talent? Yeah, we are hiring, um, you know, mm -hmm. looking for on the back end, we're looking for additional Go engineers and yep. Rust engineers. Yep. Um, you know, if you like distributed systems, if you like high performance data, if you yep. like working with a bunch of crazy cryptographers, come hang out. We'd love to learn more about you and, and see how we can work together. Um, awesome. You know, we have a lot of contracts from different members of the ecosystem to contribute back to the open source code. Um, yep. And, you know, that gives you as a developer a lot of opportunities to get some work under your belt that is publicly visible and easily to, easy to show to anyone who's interested in kind of what you work on. Um, yeah. As an open source developer, that's been a huge benefit in my career. Yeah. And, you know, we at, here at Sommelier are huge, huge advocates of open source, and we work really hard to ensure that that community and the software that we rely on stays strong. Um, yes. And, you know, if you're a developer and you share those values, like, come chat. <laughs> awesome. And I know that's great. And I, I think we will have a link in this document. And also, uh, you can go to Sommelier dot finance slash jobs and see what jobs are available uh, and we're constantly adding new positions constantly changing so if you don't see a job in there just dm us or reach out to us on telegram or discord and tell yep. us what you do and we'll see you know we can engage because the community as you would agree jack is the best source of some of the best talent cheers there you go all right cool i think uh i mean i think we've answered all the questions for today and uh, I think we are up, uh, we're over time. So we're out of time for today. Boom. Uh, thank you, Jack. Well done. Congrats to you and the team, the growing, fast growing team and uh, fast shipping team. Look forward to seeing you guys next week. Updates on app and protocol uh, for Simulia this week, episode six. See you. All Move right. fast and test things. Let's go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Bye.